Good evening, everyone. I have 601 on a Thursday evening. And if you are here for the Henrico Virtual Academy information session, welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. We are glad to have you with us. I'm Andy Jenks again with the communications and community engagement team. And we have several folks who are excited to meet you as well. I will allow just a few extra moments for other folks to uh, join us as we are getting set here at the top of the hour. And while we wait a few housekeeping notes. So how is this going to work? Well, we have about an hour's worth of content to share and discuss with you. We'll go longer if we have to. It just depends on the number of questions that folks want us to answer. But this is what's known as a Microsoft Teams live event. So for the most part, you're going to see me, you're going to see our principal and some other guest speakers delivering information. It's a little bit different than what you might be accustomed to in terms of a Microsoft Teams class or a meeting where you see a grid of faces on the screen all at one time. In this format, it allows us to open up an audience sizably bigger than a class or a meeting. The Q&A or the interaction, though, unfolds in a written format. There's a feature within a Teams Live event called the Q&A feature, and that's how you will type in some questions, which we will get to a little bit later in our program. But we have some presentation materials first, as well as honoring and recognizing some of the questions that were received just yesterday when our reminder message went out uh, about this very session. For those who may not be able to join us, but you may be hearing from via text or other message, we are recording this session. We will email it out as early as tomorrow, and we are actively working on providing translations of this session into other languages so that folks who do not speak English will be able to hear the information as well. But that is enough for, uh, from me for now. What I would like to do is introduce the very first principle of the Henrico Virtual Academy to let us know more about HVA. Please help me welcome Mr. Gary Marshall. Gary, how are you doing? Good. Thanks, Andy, for the introduction. Good evening and welcome Henrico families and students. My name is Gary Marshall and I'm excited to be the new principal of the Henrico Virtual Academy. Almost 20 years ago, I came to Henrico County excited about the laptop initiative that was starting here. I taught science and reading at Fairfield Middle School and stayed there for about 11 years, just to give you some background. I've served as the department chair, staff development coordinator, and new teacher mentor coordinator while at Fairfield. As a champion for instructional technology in my classroom, I was promoted to become an ITRT, which is now known as an innovative learning coach. As an ITRT for 10 years, I worked at Fairfield Middle School, Elko Middle School, Central Office, and Henrico High School. I've served as an assistant principal at the high school and middle school levels, and I'm currently at Elko Middle School, where I also live close by too. Throughout my career, I've been heavily involved in school and division leadership. Returning to this role has almost been like a homecoming for me because I've gotten to see some familiar faces and work with some folks that I haven't seen in a while. I'm excited to be selected to lead this new program and to get to know all of Henrico from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. With me this evening to share in the presentation that I'm going to share in just a moment is Dia Champ, Director of Middle School Education and the HVA, and Liz Parker, who is our Director of School Counseling Services student support and wellness. They will assist me in presenting and answering some of the submitted questions at the end of the presentation. And now I'm going to share the presentation with you. OK. So we are starting a new journey in Henrico County on September 8th of 2021, and I look forward to you being able to join us on that journey and your child. Today's presentation is going to focus on an exciting new option for our learners in Henrico County for the 2021-22 school year. This will be a fully 100% virtual option open to any Henrico County Public Schools student. Our learners are at the forefront of the work we're doing as we develop the Henrico Virtual Academy. We are dedicated to creating and maintaining a quality educational program that will prepare all of our learners 
to be globally competitive citizens who are life ready. The Henrico Learner Profile, or HLP, articulates Henrico's vision of what it means to be life ready. As you will recall, our Henrico Learner Profile directly supports our learners in successfully meeting graduation requirements as defined by the profile of a Virginia graduate. Not all students learn in the same manner, and so we look forward to providing a new option for our students on September 8th, 2021. In addition to our learner profile, the strategic plan for Henrico County Public Schools provides a roadmap of ongoing opportunities for continued success and growth. As we focus on academic excellence, we remain committed to ensuring that all students have multiple pathways to college and career readiness and opportunities to engage in rigorous learning experiences that best meet their unique learning styles. Our work so far and planning so far has been done with the assistance of a number of stakeholders as we plan out the Henrico Virtual Academy. A planning committee was formed that included representatives from all eight divisions of Henrico County Public Schools, as well as focus groups that included input from students, families, and community members. As an assistant principal while serving at Elko Middle School over the last year, I've seen that virtual learning is really a match for many of our students. We've also learned many lessons about how to make virtual learning more successful for students and teachers. For instance, we learned that expectations are key to from the beginning, just as in the traditional classroom setting. Teachers and students may need additional equipment in order to be able to teach effectively remotely. Recognition of our staff and students is a huge priority as it helps solidify relationships. Students also need additional opportunities for social interaction. At Elko, we had lunch clubs this year that were very successful and helped students form relationships with their teachers and peers. As a virtual school, there are many ways in which we can form a community and identity to help us create a presence. I look forward to sharing those ideas with you and hearing from you as I involve you in the process as families of the future HBA. What will instruction look like next year? The format for our school will be fully virtual and it will include a combination of synchronous and asynchronous learning opportunities. In synchronous learning, students will engage in learning at the same time as their peers, just like in a traditional classroom, with their cameras on while utilizing a common virtual background. If you could see the uh, background I had on earlier, that's a sample of what it would look like. We will also continue to be flexible with the camera use ma while maintaining the expectations. So I'll talk more about that during the Q&A session. In asynchronous learning, students will have the flexibility to participate in structured learning at their own pace. Movement breaks and shortened activities will be implemented in an effort to reduce screen time. Within the past week, our planning committee pushed out a lot of information about our newest Henrico School to a new page on the Henrico School's website. Until we launch our own website in July, this will be where you can find all the latest information about the HVA, such as a self-reflection tool, secondary course offerings, frequently asked questions, questions document that we will update frequently, and in-person school versus HVA along with a ton of other information. Continue to check that for more information as we post it. HenricoSchools.us backslash Henrico Virtual Academy. Who can apply to the HVA? Any learner who is a Henrico County resident may apply. Students who wish to attend specialty centers with the exception of the ACE program will not, however, be able to attend the HVA because those students would attend their specialty center in person. Students enrolling in the HVA are opting in to the fully virtual school for a one year commitment. Annual opportunities for students and families to determine if they would like to continue in the HVA or transfer back to the zone school for the following academic year will be provided. Families are encouraged to use the Henrico Virtual Academy online reflection tool to ensure that virtual learning is the best option for your family. By submitting the application, which will be open at the end of this session, 
families are opting in to virtual learning for the 2021-2022 school year. Students will be accepted as long as we can meet our scheduling needs. Scheduling will begin as soon as the application window closes on May 21st. Families will receive an email notification from us on or before June 4th. During that window, we will help with any other scheduling concerns that might arise. As far as service delivery models for all students receiving special education services, these services might look a little different than in the traditional school setting. We want families to be aware of the specific special education service delivery models, which are appropriate for a fully virtual academy before electing to pursue this option for their students. For example, in lieu of a co-teaching model, students will receive pullout services in the virtual environment. An IEP meeting will need to be held before students attend. The program will include integrated services classes. If you wish to discuss specific services or questions, please contact us at hva at henrico.k12.va.us. And Gary, this is Andy. I'm going to jump in before we introduce Liz. There's a graphic on the screen that's obscuring some of the writing, and I just want to say for the viewers who are watching that, it says special education related services will be provided through a teleservices model, and then we just moved it away, so now you can see that clearly. I just wanted to make sure folks at home knew what they um, might have been missing. Perfect. Please go I on. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, as as that says, special education related services will be, be provided through a teleservices model. Um, if you do have any questions, please contact the HVA at henrico.k12.va.us um, email, and we'll we'll address those questions. I'm going to turn over to Liz Parker to discuss our course offerings and specialty programs. Yes, thank you so much. Um, the HVA is going to continue to empower all students to own their own journey and prepare for multiple post-secondary pathways by offering a variety of courses across content areas. So students who attend the HVA will have the opportunity to select from an amended list of courses that is now available um, and it will allow them to continue pursuing their pathways of interest while working towards the Applied Studies Diploma, the Standard or the Advanced Studies Diploma. At the elementary level, students will have access to the same courses as their in-person elementary learning peers. These include courses in reading, math, science, social studies, library, art, music, health, and physical education. At the secondary level, students will have rigorous and engaging options for English, math, science and social studies, world languages, health and physical education, fine arts, and CTE. Middle school students in the HVA on an accelerated path will have similar opportunities as their peers in the traditional setting to pursue high school credit bearing coursework. Additionally, Secondary course options at the HVA will include select honors and advanced placement courses across different content areas. Interested HVA students will also still be able to participate in the specialty center application process. Accepted students who then choose to attend a specialty center, including the International Baccalaureate Program, and the Gifted Young Scholars Academy would enroll full time in person to the traditional school in which the program is zoned. However, juniors and seniors who are accepted to the Advanced Career Education or ACE Center will be able to complete their one and two year skills based courses in person at either Highland Springs or Hermitage ACE Centers while also completing the remainder of their coursework virtually through the HBA. An addendum of the planning guide has now been released in by way of our course offering list. For right, all, all of our course offerings, yep, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Liz. Yeah, well, for all of our course offerings, we are providing HBA students with access to the same high quality learner centered curriculum that we provide for all students adapted for the virtual setting. So as you know, our curriculum, whether virtual or in person, defines that what for teaching and learning and ensures the vertical articulation of the knowledge, skills, and attributes our students need to be life ready. Thank you, Gary. Thank you so much. I apologize. 
Um, beyond academics, the HBA will remain committed to nurturing the whole child and ensuring students receive opportunities to develop cognitively, physically, socially, and emotionally. This will be embedded in the school's vision, mission, and core values. Advisory will continue to be a vehicle for establishing community and meeting the social emotional needs of learners through morning meetings, check-ins, online clubs, SEL instruction, and digital citizenship instruction. Also, just as important, is ensuring that students in the HVA are able to participate in co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Students interested in participating in middle school athletics, as well as the VHSL activities and athletics seen on this slide, will be able to do so in person through their zone school. Other activities and clubs will be made available to students through the HVA itself. As I was stating through advisory class, all teachers will have a club, an online club where students can participate in that. Uh, one thing we did at Elko this year is we had a Minecraft club, we've had a little game club, so we will have opportunities for social interaction. Students will also have common lunch to be able to socialize as well through small groups. Students are going to have a, access to a variety of student support and wellness services, such as school counseling services, school psychological services, school social work services, behavior support, and extended learning opportunities. Before we get into our staffing for the HVA, I wanted to take a moment to shout out all of our amazing teachers during Teacher Appreciation Week. I also want to shout out a teacher in my own life who had a profound impact by instilling a love of reading and making a personal connection with me as a student. Ms. Armstrong was an amazing teacher for me growing up. I know all of you have stories of a teacher who has impacted your lives. We are looking for teachers to staff the HVA who've been memorable this year with virtual teaching overall. Based on our last year of experience, many of our teachers have found that virtual learning is an ideal fit for their skill set. We're actively seeking teachers who've thrived at building and maintaining relationships in the virtual environment. And we're looking for applicants who have had success with academic achievement and who are ready to learn and grow with us at the HVA. With that being said, we look forward to continuing this work as we continue to have a laser focus on creating a memorable experience for our new virtual students on the first day of school, September 8th, 2021. At this time, I do wanna review with you the online learning reflection tool that I was just talking about. This tool, we strongly encourage you to take a look at first with you and your learner. There's a section for the learner where the student will complete independently or with the help of a learner partner, which is an adult selected by the online learner's family who will commit to providing the support indicated below for the online learner through the virtual learning experience. It's very important that you use this tool to try to help determine if it's the best fit for you and your child to, to participate in virtual learning for the next school year. We ultimately want all of our students to be successful, and we feel that if you take time to reflect on some of these items on the self-reflection tool, it'll give you a good idea of whether or not you're gonna be the best fit for the virtual learning environment to be successful. Like I said, there's a section for learner characteristics, learner partner, the adult completes, learning environment, learning technologies, and technology skills. As you start to complete the online self-reflection tool, if you've answered yes to the majority of the statements, then it's probably a good fit for you to, to consider applying for the HVA. If you answered no to five or more of the statements, you might wanna reconsider if the HVA is the right choice for your family. You may wanna have a conversation with your school counselor or administrator, or reach out to HVA staff to talk about your specific situation. As we prepare for the launch of our application tonight, it will launch tonight and it will be open through May 21st. I wanted to kind of take a minute to go through what are some of the items on the application that you'll need to complete. The second question is asking you if you can provide proof of residency showing that you reside in Henrico County. This opportunity is only open to Henrico County residents at this time. There is a document that will show you what proof of residency is required and you'll mark that. It also asks in, this, in the next question, have you currently been accepted to any of the following programs for the 21-22 school year? 
if you've been accepted, if your child's been accepted to the Specialty Center, the Gifted Young Scholars Academy, an Achievable Dream Academy, or the International Baccalaureate Program, then they cannot attend the HBA for next year unless your child decides not to attend one of those programs. We have accommodations for the ACE Center, again at Hermitage or Highland Springs. Those students can still participate in the HVA. We also ask for some general demographic information about your student. We ask for their grade level for the upcoming year if they're currently enrolled and if you're not currently enrolled that's fine but you'll need to enroll in Henrico County Public Schools in order to participate and what would be your 21-22 zone school so please select your your school from the list below and then we're going to ask for some legal guardian demographic information your acknowledgement if it's um, if your decision is related to COVID or if it's related to your child just being a great fit for virtual learning, we want to know that. We are also, in addition to being the Henrico Virtual Academy, part of the part of what's going to happen next year is that we are um, going to be the option for students who wish to continue to remain virtual for COVID related reasons. So if that's the case, please click yes. And then there are some additional kind of affirmations that we ask that you make at the bottom at the, at the, towards the end of the application that you've reviewed the online reflection tool, that you understand that compulsory attendance applies, all information is accurate, the camera must remain on during all instruction and interaction with the teacher or service provider, and that your family wishes to opt in, all instruction and educational services must be provided while the student is physically located within the state of Virginia. That is a requirement by law, so that's why that one is on there. And that you've reviewed the HVA course offerings and you're aware that performing arts are not offered through the HVA at the secondary level. So like I said earlier, generally the courses line up in terms of elementary, but when it comes to secondary, there are some differences. So I'll really go through that secondary course offerings guide before you make a decision on whether or not to apply. If you have an additional questions, please continue to either email hva at henrico.k12.va.us or go to the website and look at the frequently asked questions document that we'll be updating um, very, very soon with some of the questions we've even received today. At this point, I wanna turn this back over to Andy. so that he can point us to some of the questions that were raised um, throughout the last day that we can answer for you. Outstanding. All right, Gary, Dia, Liz, don't go very far because this next segment is all about you guys too. I do want to point out though, uh, if you are able to navigate to the live event Q&A function, for me on a PC, it's in the top right hand corner of the screen. For you, depending on whether you're using a phone or an Apple device, it may be in different locations, but we are dropping some links into that section of this meeting. So some of the web pages that we mentioned, if you weren't able to jot down the address real quick, you can find it by looking in the live event Q&A feature. The most important web page of which is henricoschools.us slash Henrico Virtual Academy. And as of just a few minutes ago, we posted the application there. So it is up and you can give that a look now or whenever you feel comfortable doing so. As for questions, as I mentioned at the beginning of this program, this is what's known as a Microsoft Teams live event. And so the questions are not handled the way you might think in a classroom or a meeting where a bunch of people's faces pop up on screen and we talk back and forth because live events like this accommodate a very large crowd it takes that verbal interaction out of the equation so that we don't hear a hundred different microphones open or sometimes those those nuances to live meetings but what it does allow us to do is collect questions in advance as well as take questions in the live event q a feature and we'll be uh, chipping away at those for at least the next 35 minutes or so we've uh, booked ourselves until at least seven o'clock we'll go a little bit longer if we have to and I'm going to start with questions that we received overnight after yesterday's reminder message was emailed out. I'm not going to specifically indicate who asked a question because in many cases, several people asked similar questions. So we have attempted to summarize what some of the most frequently asked questions are. And if your question isn't answered tonight, you can always email the HVA planning team at HVA 
at henrico.k12.va.us. Or you can check out the Frequently Asked Questions document that is already posted on the HVA webpage. But enough for me. Uh, Gary, I want to direct this first question to you. A lot of people ask this. Can we switch from virtual to in-person and vice versa next year? All right, thanks for the question. Um, to answer the question, no, it has been um, a little more flexible this year because we haven't had to you know, worry about the enrollment and staffing. For next year, we do ask for a one-year commitment that you, if you're going to participate in the Henrico Virtual Academy, you're in it for the full year, and then you can make a decision at the end of the year if you want to remain with us or if you want to return to the homeschool. Um, the reasoning for that is, like I said, we are going to determine our staffing based on enrollment. And so we want to make sure we have teachers in place. We are pulling um, Henrico County teachers from other schools um, through an interview process. So we want to make sure we have folks at those schools and at our school. And Gary, uh, I, I want to speak for just a moment about the massive chess game that is known as master scheduling. And you've been a school administrator for a long time. And that master scheduling generally happens in the month of May and June, and, and even in some cases uh, through the summer months. And uh, maybe you can speak to the massively complicated moving of pieces when master scheduling is formed, which is why we ask for that, for that commitment now and why it is meaningful to remain intact throughout the year. Sure, absolutely. So as we develop the master schedule, we look at a lot of considerations. We look at course requests from the previous school year, and we're going to try to match those up as closely as possible to what we offer in the HVA. And as we do that, that's how we determine how many teachers we need and we determine what teachers are going to teach. As soon as we do that, we let the teachers know and they start planning immediately for lessons in the fall. So we want them to start creating those quality lessons and we need to give them as much planning time as possible. So once we create the master schedule, we have to stick to it in order to be able to service our students in the best way possible. Gary, thanks. Dia, the next question is for you. Several folks asked variations of this question. Will gifted classes be a part of the HVA? And most specifically, what will it look like at the elementary level? Thank you, Andy, for the question. And absolutely, gifted services will be provided for students at the elementary level and secondary level. However, it will look different. It will not be the traditional, some classes may be self-contained. It will be focused more on pull-out services. That is rendered in many elementary schools at this time, but due to the nature of the structure of the classes, we will not have those self-contained classes that some of the elementary schools um, have. At the secondary level, we will continue to have elective, the elective course and the required sixth grade courses um, at that level. And Dee, is there anything else you can add about why that is uh, and, and why it, it will be that way at the elementary and the secondary level moving forward? Well, once again, um, it's staffing is based on enrollment. So it's based on student interest. And we have to determine exactly what we can provide and what we can offer for the students in the virtual um, setting, but also it's very different with um, in regards to like co-teaching in an in-person class versus in a virtual class. So we need to have that structure on which they can pull out into another virtual room and then go back to receive their services. Dia, thanks. Uh, Liz Parker to school counseling for just a moment. And uh, I think folks have the course request process from earlier in this calendar year fresh on their minds because several folks asked, are classes going to be the same as compared to the course requests? Liz Parker. Great, excellent question. Um, yes, yeah, so all of our students have completed their course requests for the upcoming school year. So once students receive notification that they are going to be attending the HVA, um, their schools and councils will be working with them to make any adjustments necessary. So if the courses that the students had already requested are courses that the HVA will, is offering, then those courses, the students will just be instantaneously put into those courses. In the case of students who have maybe requested a course that is not offered at the HVA, they'll be having conversations with their building administrator, their school and their school counselors to make some additional selections so that they can revise their existing course request forms um, to make sure that all of their course requests are matching with our course offerings at the HVA. 
And Liz, I think you touch on an important point because throughout this session, I'm generally saying if you have any questions at the end of the night that you can always email the HVA planning team, but you're touching on the, the reality that if something is specific about your student and that student's course selections, you might be much better served communicating with a teacher, a counselor, or a principal at the current school. Is that a, is that a fair way to put it? Absolutely, I think so. If it has to do with academic career planning or how going to the HVA with a different um, course selection might impact your future goals, I would say absolutely go ahead and reach out to your school counselor. Um, but again, we have a number of course offerings with the HVA, so students will definitely be able to um, take most of the courses they've already requested and then have a lot of other alternative courses in case some of those they previously requested are not being offered at the HVA. Thanks, and we'll do a shout out again for the course offerings, which do currently exist on the Henrico Virtual Academy webpage, henricoschools.us slash Henrico Virtual Academy. Dia, what will class sizes look like in the HVA? So we want our class sizes to be, to replicate the typical class size in an in-person school, following the Virginia Department of Education standards of quality. So for example, at the elementary level, we try to stick have classes around the 24 range and the lower 20s um, to keep those classes small and manageable for the teachers. And at the secondary level, we typically have classes around 30 students. So we want to follow, we will follow, follow in line with the Virginia Department of Education, as well as what we try to do in a traditional setting. So it is fair to say that if we have 500 second graders who want to do virtual learning, it will not be one class of 500 second graders, mm -hmm. obviously. We will adjust and staff accordingly, depending on what the numbers look like after the application process. You are correct. <laughs> All right, Tia, thank you. Gary, let me go back to you for uh, a variation of this question that several folks asked. Can individual classes be taken through the HVA, and, and I might rephrase that by saying, can, can people just pick and choose, a, you know, maybe an HVA class here, an HVA class there? Can they do anything like that? And that's a great question. So at this time, the plans are not in place for us to be able to offer that. There are some other similar op offerings, you know, that other programs, um, they offer that option. We, at this point, are not set up to do that. I'm not saying that's you know not possible in the future. That's certainly something we can consider. But as we develop the academy for its first year, its initial year, that's not in the plans at this point. And, and Gary, it would be fair to say that the plans that we are moving forward with here in Henrico County are done so with uh, with a broader lens of what else is happening in the region and perhaps throughout the country as well as other school systems begin to adopt an all virtual model. Gary, I think it's, is it fair to say that it's helpful to view our approach and that of other school divisions as this is its own school. It, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and people don't drop in and drop out throughout the year. It, it is its own entity, and maybe it's more helpful to think of HVA as an entirely self-contained school, the, the way the different schools in our various neighborhoods may be as well. That seemed like a lot of words, but I think you could probably articulate it better than I just did. Yeah, and we are excited to become Henrico County's 73rd school. So we look forward to, you know, being our own entity, having our, our own identity, having our own group of students down the road, having our own graduation events that um, and all kinds of different things like a PTSA we will have our own parent advisory committees. We are a separate school that that functions just like any other school in Henrico County and we are the newest school we not might not be brick and mortar you're not going to see us you know being built as you drive down the road but we are we're fully virtual and we are a brand new school in Henrico County here for the long term all right Gary stay right there several folks asked will exams be taken in person in the HVA so the assessments most of them will be taken at home or virtually. Um, however, there are certain assessments like the SOLs, um, SATs, those have to be taken in person. So we are in discussions of, you know, what space those exams will be, uh, not exams, those SOLs will be taken in. And so keep in mind that some of those assessments, they do have to be in person. Exams is not one of those assessments, but SOLs and some of our other um, higher level assessments do need to be taken in person. Got it. 
All right, Dia, let me turn things over to you now for just a moment. Uh, will the Henrico Virtual Academy be offered for preschool students? We've already established it's K through 12. What about pre-K? Um, actually, the HVA does not have a virtual option for pre-K students due to the fundamental skills that students learn at that age, such as fi fine, motor fine motor skills as well as those social skills that we feel like de developmentally they will have that face-to-face -face teacher um, to receive that learning, as well as one thing that's really big with pre-K is social play, and they need that time to work in person with Got students. Dia, yeah, thanks. Gary. What will the daily schedule look like? That is an excellent question. Um, the, the school year has changed so dramatic, dramatically for us. The schedule this year was nothing like what we've had in the past. You know, going from 8.30 in the morning to 2 o'clock and then having Wednesdays set aside for that extra support. Um, we're going to follow some components of the existing schedule. We will have office hours for teachers. The set hours, we do have to adhere to um, requirements for a certain number of hours, but I've heard from a lot of parents that want flexibility. And for the long term, our goal is to just be able to offer that flexibility and more of a self-paced option. This year was, was a lot more um, synchronous, in-class led instruction for next year for the Henrico Virtual Academy, our schedule is going to include more independent work that students can do on their own and then get that support from the teacher in small group sessions. So we're looking to differentiate just a little bit more, but the schedule we're still working on and it's going to be determined like all things uh, by enrollment and student interest. So and we Gary, will have the schedule coming soon. Let's spend another minute on that and I think you did mm -hmm. a good job of uh, articulating it already, but um, it's a good opportunity for us to touch on the differences between virtual school this coming fall, September of 21, mm -hmm. as opposed to the virtual school that some families are familiar with now. Just as school in September of last year was different than emergency pandemic adjustments a year ago, things this coming fall are still going to look and feel different than people know right now, correct? Yes, I think the one thing to, that we're going to always be considerate of is the screen time <clears throat> for, for our students. We don't want them in front of the computer all day and then to have to in the evening spend hours on homework. So we're going to keep an eye on that. We have to pay attention to the social needs, the social emotional needs of our learners. And so creating that schedule is going to be essential to make sure that we do that. It is going to look a little different because we're not going to have Wellness Wednesdays. We're not going to have an 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock schedule, most likely for secondary. The elementary school will have reduced hours. However, the secondary level, we're looking at being more closely related to what the traditional schedule is, where there may be a little more time for instruction provided. And we'll also have more time for breaks within that. So looking at, for instance, even lunch, you know, 30 minutes, it's been um, provided in the feedback that 30 minutes is not enough time for some of our students to prepare their own lunch and then have lunch. So we're, we're looking to build a little extra time there and padding, but we're really taking the input from our stakeholders. And so if you have additional input about the schedule, now is the time to provide that because we're starting to develop what that's going to look like. Got it. All right, Liz, let's go to you for a second. This has come up before and it is addressed on our webpage already, but it comes up so routinely that let, let's spend another minute on it. Can my student attend the HVA if they are enrolled in a specialty center? Yes, it's an excellent question. So the answer to that question is students that are attending a specialty center, including IB, International Baccalaureate Program, or GISA, our gifted program, would be attending that and fully enrolled in the traditional in-person school. So no, those students would not be able to attend HVA and one of those traditional specialty centers in their traditional schools. They would need to make a choice um, at this time between the IB program and attending HVA. The only exception to that is our ACE centers um, where students actually only attend at a certain part of the day and then return home where they can then continue their virtual work through the HVA. But all specialty centers, including IB and GISA, 
with the exception of our ACE centers, will need to um, make a decision uh, based on their family and what, uh, what's best for their students and for their family in terms of enrollment, whether they want to enroll or continue enrollment in the specialty center, or whether they'd like to um, enroll fully virtual through the HBA. And uh, Liz, Gary, Dia, I appreciate all the compliments on the quality of the questions, but uh, for those who may be just joining us, what we are doing is actually summarizing questions that were submitted by you, the folks at home, after we opened up a form yesterday, and many of the questions were similar in nature. And so to get our Q&A section off to a, a, a free-flowing or a, more of a, a, con, a condensed start, we have summarized a lot of the submitted questions from you, the folks at home, and I've been reading them off uh, so that we can get answers as quickly as we can in the time that we have allotted. I have one more question from the list submitted yesterday, and then I see something like 73 questions have been submitted from the folks who are with us in this event, which we'll begin to chip away at in a second. But Gary, uh, this last one on my sheets for you. How are you making sure that HVA students are getting the same level of quality education as those who will be learning in person? Great question. I'm glad you asked that because staffing um, and making sure our students have access to a high quality education is of the utmost importance for us um, in Henrico County. So our staff will come from Henrico County licensed teachers who've demonstrated success in the virtual classroom, and that will include a principal referral and an interview process. Um, professional learning, we're going to continue to provide that through um, summer asynchronous courses and through we have an entire week before school actually starts where teachers will also um, get some instruction on how to really engage students in high quality virtual learning experiences. We're also going to have um, weekly what we call PLCs or professional learning communities and during that time teachers are going to learn with each other in a content where they might work with other, if I'm a science teacher, I'm working with other science teachers, and they'll also work in a separate PLC with um, kind of interdisciplinary. So they might work with the PE teacher, and that's where we get to talk about some of those cross-curricular questions and really help them to focus on creating units and authentic experiences for the classroom that are not just uh, one content, some of those bigger questions that might overlap across multiple classrooms. So professional learning is going to continue to be um, implemented. It's going to be very robust for our teachers. And so, you know, we, we look forward to working with them on that and developing that. Um, and we will continue to monitor the instruction and also we'll have a parent advisory council and a student advisory council. So any input about instruction can be driven through those channels as well as a principal's monthly coffee um, that I'll hold that all of our parents will and families will be invited to attend. Got it. Gary, thank you. All right, we are going to turn our attention now to questions that have been submitted just in the past 45 minutes by the folks who are with us here in the room, so to speak. And before we get into that, I do want to say it's entirely possible that some questions may not have an answer or answers that are so specific to a unique uh, situation that it might be better off for you to communicate with us through uh, the HVA email address, which is hva at henrico.k12.va.us. But we will attempt to, uh, for at least the next 15 minutes, possibly longer, address those questions that appeal to the broadest number of people in the time that we have this evening. So with that, I'd like to introduce Sean Gilliland from the communications team. Sean has been monitoring the live event Q&A, and she's going to get us started with some questions that have been coming from you, the folks here in the room. Hey, Sean. Hey there, Andy. So I think we're going to kick off with a few uh, clarification questions about the application process. Um, one parent has asked, do, do parents need to complete an application for each child? And I'll go ahead and answer that, Sean. Thank you. Um, yes, each child needs to complete a separate application, and that's just really based on the fact that we need to collect information specifically for each child because this this form that we use to collect all of this information is using used to drive um, our enrollment process and our staffing process. So if you could please complete one for each child that you wish to attend the HVA. Thanks, Gary. Next question is, if our child is already enrolled in the summer program at Henrico Virtual Academy, do we need to sign up using the form again? 
And Liz, I'm not, you might have to help with this one, sure, but. Absolutely. Uh, so we are offering through our summer programs, we are offering some virtual courses, but those courses are not a part of Henrico Virtual Academy. Our Henrico Virtual Academy launches in September, th our first day of school, and that is when the official school will be open. So students participating in courses over the summer, um, that is not related to Henrico Virtual Academy. It's an excellent question, and thank you for allowing me to clarify that. All right, moving on, we have a question um, about from um, a homeschooling family. I'm currently a homeschooler that resides in Henrico County, and we school through a private virtual homeschool academy. Would I also apply through the application on the site as well? Yes, please apply through. This is Mr. Marshall answering your question. Please apply through the application that um, we're posting tonight. And once you apply, we will send you an email with directions on how to enroll in Henrico County Public Schools so that we can get you into our system as quickly as possible. All right, thank you for that question. Moving on, we have a few questions about folks that are currently living outside of Henrico and planning to be transferring back. One family asked, um, they will be moving back to Henrico on June 30th currently living in York County school system. The HVA application process ends before we resume our residency. Will we have an option to apply in the summer? And there was another question about um, a um, student transferring back to Henrico. Um, can they apply now? So for the first question, this is Mr. Marshall again. So I would say for the first question, please go ahead and submit your application so that we have your information and then we can make sure that you get enrolled once you are registered in Henrico and once you've moved to the new address. And the second question, Sean, can you repeat that one? Well, it, it was related to um, a, a transfer also. Um, someone okay. I think that has been a Henrico student is living outside the county now, so I think yeah. you probably already addressed that. Yeah, any anyone who um, is not a current Henrico County student, but is going to be a Henrico County resident can apply. Just go in and apply through the link and then we'll send you the um, the information to enroll into our power school system and give you additional instructions on what proof of residency is required. But that proof of residency document, we're going to be posting that on our website, so you'll have that for reference as well. All right, moving on, we're going to talk about some course options. My daughter will be in eighth grade next year and has signed up for six courses where she will be able to receive high school high school credit. Are there classes that an eighth grader can take to receive high school credit upon completion? Where can we see a list of the courses offered to eighth graders? We see a course list under high school. Would she be able to sign up for those classes when she's in eighth grade? And that's, that's a great question, yeah. Liz. I'll leave it I'm to you. I'm happy to jump in with that one. Absolutely. So on that course list, you'll actually see courses that have an asterisk beside them on the course list. Those are courses that um, may also be offered for high school credit bearing courses and taken at the middle school level. So we do have a number of courses. We did not separate them out um, because in the virtual setting, these courses could be blended of high school and middle school students taking the same courses. For example, Algebra 1 or Geometry, you might have a class that has both middle and high school students in that course. Um, so yes, absolutely. Our middle school students interested and that meet prerequisites for taking high school credit courses will absolutely have the opportunity to continue to do so based on the course offerings um, that have the asterisks beside them on the um, course offering form that's public currently. And Liz, just while you're while you're here, just a few follow up questions about electives and if a student needs to take driver's ed, will that be available to them? So at this time, um, it's my understanding that driver's ed is not a part of our course offerings for the HVA. OK, for elementary students, will they be getting new Chromebooks and new equipment different than what they currently have? And another question related to equipment is if um, will students be able to use their private equipment, laptops, phones and such? 
So I will um, attempt to answer that as best as I can. This is Mr. Marshall, and I'm I'm kind of a technology geek, so I'll do my best here. But um, yes, you can use your own device. Um, I will tell you that we are looking at some of the feedback that the Chromebooks have not been um, as robust as some folks like. We can't replace those immediately for the next year, but we are looking into options for additional equipment that will support our students in the HVA. And down the road, we're looking at the possibility that maybe even a different device would be more beneficial to our students who are fully virtual or something like a second monitor. So I can't commit to that yet, but I'm, I, I'm sharing that we have had discussions about it for certain, so I welcome your input on it and just kind of stay tuned to see what we can provide um, to our students in the virtual academy. And Gary and Sean, this is Andy. Let me jump in mm -hmm. for a second because Gary, you reminded me of some of the aesthetic nuances to HVA that I don't think we've really discussed at great length here in this setting, which is you're joining us in front of a newly created virtual background for the Henrico Virtual Academy, which is not to say that that is the logo of the school, but it brings up the point that there are different sets of expectations for students in the HVA and correct me if I'm wrong and, and perhaps this discussion has evolved without me, but it involves cameras being on, uh, a school background and participation may just look a little bit different in the fall than folks might be familiar with currently. Is that a fair way to put it? Yeah, so I shared earlier that the cameras are gonna be expected to be on with the common background. Now we understand also that there are specific needs that specific students have and and not they're not all the time can the camera physically be on, but you'll work with families will work with me as far as you know any accommodations we need to make with the camera being on or off, but it is the general expectation. And I think also we even talked about um, with our teacher focus groups today, we were talking about how um, maybe it could be a, a reward that we give a student a free pass not, not to be on the, the camera f once every two weeks or something like that because we understand that they're kids and there might be just a day that they don't feel comfortable being on the camera. So we want to work as that, you know, we want to work flexibly with the kids too. Yes, Very it's nice. a requirement. Yes, it's the expectation, but we will also have flexibility and maybe even some opportunities for them to be able to not have it on every once in a while. I'm glad you touched on that. All right, Sean, back to you. Sure. So I think this is a, a good question for Liz. And I know, Liz, that we've talked about um, students that are attending, especially center guys that are not, um, they, they can't attend um, the virtual academy that they have to make a choice. What would you recommend? Um, there's several, several questions that are related to this. What would be your recommendation if students are currently on a waiting list for an IB program or for a specialty center? Yep, I think that's a great question. I think um, because the application window is opening now, I think that you go ahead and move forward based on your current enrollment status for next year. And then if accepted into a specialty center program, you can adjust at that time. All right, thank you very much. Sure. Now we're, now we're going to turn a little bit towards enrollment. We've had several questions about how many students do you plan to accept at the elementary, middle and high school level? and how many maximum members of students per virtual class? Sure, so I'll answer the first one, then if I can get Dia to follow up on the second one, um, because that's one of the things she touched on um, in our most commonly asked questions. So we do not currently have a cap on enrollment. This is a, a COVID response as well as we're opening a brand new school. So at this point, there's no cap on enrollment. And one thing I did wanna clarify um, from an earlier question, we were talking about enrollment as it relates to um, folks who don't live in Henrico County yet. So what I wanna just clarify on that is that um, if a student's not a resident, we're not gonna enroll, be able to enroll them until they're officially a resident of Henrico County. Um, we will work with families on a case-by-case -case basis though who, who wish to enroll after the deadline. So please keep in touch. Um, it's not off the table for you, but you have to be a Henrico County resident to enroll. So Dia, I know you spoke earlier about our um, caps on students. So if you could share on classes. The, the question Sean, was- Sean, can you clarify that? Yeah, they were asking about uh, class sizes. 
for class sizes, yeah, we're still following the VDOE standards of quality. So it's going to be an average of normally for like for the elementary level, we try to keep it in the 20 range. It depends on what grade level. For example, at kindergarten, it's going to be lower than what you can have at, at the fifth grade level, normally around 24 ish. At the middle school level, we try to keep it around 30. I know in high school classes, sometimes they have it bursting at the same, but we will have to follow the standards of quality and it depends on the course or content. So if they want to get, if they want to ask specifically about specific classes, they can send us an email and we can talk to them about that. But I will tell you that we try to keep it the same as we have it in a traditional setting um, prior to pre-COVID. Pre um, so it would still be around the same that it would be in in-person. Thank you, Dia. And Gary, I know that we um, you talked about staffing earlier. We have a question. Would the teachers be coming from Henrico schools exclusively? At this point, yes, they will, because one of the things that we have to take in consideration is that the kids are generally coming from existing Henrico County schools. So as we lose students from those schools that are coming to the Henrico Virtual Academy, we have to make staffing adjustments at that school and for us. So we will be hiring for at this point um, internal applicants only. All right, thank you. Will diplomas be listed as HVA or the zone schools? Hmm. Dia, that might be a question yes. for you. For, for this year, because we're a program for year one, it will be listed for the zone school. Moving forward after this year, it may look different because of the COVID response, but at this point it will be for the zone school. All right, thank you. Next question. If a student just cannot continue to succeed in the virtual environment, wouldn't an exception be made to transfer them back to in-person learning? So at the school level, I will tell you, you know, we we're going to make every effort possible to make sure the student's successful. We're going to have a student support team in place. We're going to have some parent meetings. We're going to have some interventions put in place to help the students succeed. If we get to the point where where we just have tried and tried and nothing seems to be working, then we'll look at that on a case by case basis and make that judgment call. But that is hopefully going to be a very rare instance because I think we have the tools that are going to allow students to succeed in this environment. And Sean, okay. I'm so sorry. I just want to make a correction to an answer that I gave prior to um, about driver's education. Sure. So I apologize for interrupting, but I want to make sure our families get the most uh, the accurate information that they need to make decisions. So driver's education is in two parts. We have the in the classroom part, the drivers and highway safety, and then we have the on the road part. So we will be offering, and you'll see on the course list that we are offering the driver's education and highway safety in the classroom portion. So I did want to make that clarification so that families understood that yes and no. <laughs> so yes, mm -hmm. we are offering driver's education and highway safety in the classroom, um, but not necessarily the on the road portion. Thanks Liz for clarifying that for our families. I'm sure that was helpful information. All right, we have a question about um, family situations. If you were to travel out of the country in an emergency situation, will the student be able to continue classes while abroad? We will have to, um, <laughs> we'll have to look into that. I know we've had some situations like that this year and going abroad, there's some challenges with the technology and so forth. So we would have to handle that on a case by case basis. Yeah, there are also some service providing um, challenges that come with that, even going out of state um, because our service providers are licensed to provide services in the state of Virginia. So it really would be a situation that I would encourage a family if that is the thought um, for the next school year to really reach out to the HBA and share their specific circumstance so that we can look to see um, whether the technology and what additional services that student is receiving and if they would be able to continue receiving their service outside of the state. I will jump in for just a second because for a few brief moments, I felt like I could peer into Gary's head and see the gears turning as that very uh, specific question, which is a good one and, and uh, very important to ask, was, was being posed in real time. Uh, so we uh, initially publicized this as about an hour long session and we've reached the 60 minute mark now. I think we can stretch it out for just a little while longer, but for anyone who may have joined us uh, mid session, the HVA webpage does have 
uh, a list of frequently asked questions. We will also be posting tonight's presentation. And when all of this is said and done, we'll post tonight's recording to that very page as well. And by the way, we've spoken mostly, almost entirely about the Henrico Virtual Academy, but after listening to this session, if you are more interested in returning in person next fall, like most of our students will, we have an entire page of our website dedicated to next year's in-person plan as well. So that material also exists on our website right now, even though we've spent the majority of this session focused specifically on Henrico Virtual Academy. With that, Sean, I'll go back to you for a few more questions from tonight's audience. Sure. So we actually have a question from a student who says, I would like to remain virtual next year, but since I am taking pharmacy technician um, classes at Highland Springs, I'd like to be there in person. Um, and I'd like to know a little bit about how the transportation will work if I am virtual for Tucker classes, but I want to be in person for classes at Highland Springs. So I think, is that part of the ACE Center? Liz, do you know if it's part of the ACE Center? I'm looking to make sure. So we offer such a wide variety of CTE courses across all of our campuses, including our specialty centers. So I want to make sure um, that our pharmacy technician program is a part of our ACE centers. And so the answer to that question would be yes, because that specific program falls under our advanced career education centers at Highland Springs at Hermitage. Then the answer is yes, you can attend both. You can attend pharmacy tech classes and then also go back to virtual. The transportation question is one that I think once we see our students who have um, applied, we will then be able to look and address any transportation needs that we have for students to do that. All right, moving on to the next question. Um, this one is related to when do you need to make your decision? You've applied, you've been accepted, you know, with um, the mitigation and, and things changing related to the virus. You know, things are constantly changing. We're talking about, you know, opening up more in June. Um, when, when is it expected for families to make a final decision? Good question. So um, for us, again, we have to determine our staffing enrollment and get the master schedule set. So that's why our deadline for applying is May 21st. After that point, whoever applies will be added to a wait list, but our final numbers will start to be set from May 21st on. And then our deadline for letting folks know whether they um, we can accommodate them with the schedule and everything is June 4th. So May 21st is the hard deadline for the application for us for the HVA. OK, um, moving on to talking about some extracurricular and some activities for students. Will HBA students be able to attend social functions, homecoming, prom, assuming that's ever possible again, and, and different things like that that, you know, they experience in a normal setting? And that's a good question uh, that we we are going to kind of look into a little bit, but I anticipate that they would be able to attend those. But again, you've got to, it depends on the situation because part of the HVA is due to a COVID response and part of it is not. So we're going to have to talk about that as a team. Okay, and thanks. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but. Okay, go ahead, Sean. All right. Um, I think this is a question that probably needs some uh, some clarification. It says, so with HVA, there will not be live instruction for elementary kids? There will be live instruction. There's going to be synchronous instruction, yes, provided. It's going to be a mix of synchronous, which is, is live, is what you call live, and then asynchronous, which is more of the independent self-paced work. So hopefully that answered the question, Sean. I think so. All right. So here's a good question. Will my student have the opportunity to opt into online learning in the school year 22-23 if she attends in-person learning in 21-22? Yes. So right now, sorry, Deaton, with Dr. Champ, I jumped in. Um, right now, we're looking at annual opportunities for students to make determinations if they want to continue on with the HVA or if they want to apply to be a part of the HVA. So any decision made this year is not necessarily binding for future years. 
Okay, next question. Will teachers be teaching from their homes or from a school classroom? So, um, that decision kind of hasn't yet been determined. We anticipate that in the long term, the teachers associated with the HVA would teach virtually from, from they don't have to be in a school location because we're not using a school building for students. Um, teachers will have the option to work in a school building. For next year, we again, it's going to be based on enrollment because it depends on how many teachers we're going to have. We may choose to have them remain at their home school. At this point, I just don't know, but we're going to um, we're going to hopefully have a little more information on that for next week for our session. And Dia, to clarify, yeah, to clarify, because mm -hmm. remember we we have the HVA, but we're also focused on the COVID response. So a lot of things cannot be finalized for year one because we're operating for two two for two purposes for students who need the virtual who would like the virtual option as well as students who would like the virtual option due to the COVID response. Great, great clarification there, Dia. Thank you. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? Um, Gary, can you tell us a little bit about the daily schedule? There are several questions related to the start time and the end time for for each each day. Sure, and it's going to it's going to vary depending upon the elementary whether they're elementary middle or high school because again i don't know if you if you were here in our conversation about the ace program but we have to align our schedule at the high school with the ace program so that students can attend that as well um, the elementary school schedule it's we've kind of gone back and forth about whether it will mirror the current elementary school schedule or not but it will be um a little it'll be the earlier one and then we'll start with our middle and then we'll start with our high school so we anticipate elementary starting at about eight middle starting at 8 30 and then high school starting at nine um, but that we haven't finalized the schedule yet um, you know so i'm not sure exactly what what the hours would be on that and i'm going to offer this one last question to wrap us up because i think it, it you know this is a this is a new program and so people have many questions and 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 they're processing the information they want to know, is HVA different for each school or is it the same for every school? Great question. It is the same for every school. We are we're going to be our own independent school. We are the 73rd school in Henrico. So we are in we are a separate entity from every high school, every elementary school, every middle school in the county. So um, you know keep that in mind moving forward we are going to become our own school with our own logo theme uh, everything traditions um, so we're going to start building that next year all right thanks gary and uh, now i think we're going to toss back to andy and wrap it up sean gilliland thanks very much and again we uh, attempted to pose the questions that were either asked by the most people or that appealed to the broadest number of audience members, but did we get to everything tonight? Of course not. That's where direct communication with the HVA planning team comes into play. HVA at henrico.k12.va.us is the email address you want to use to send messages to the folks who will know the answers that you're looking for in addition to your counselor or principal of your current school. With that, I'd like to bring in our panelists just one last time, either for a word to wrap it up or any last thoughts that were on their mind. Liz, let me bring you in uh, first real quick. Is there anything else that you'd like the folks at home to know about HVA? Um, no, not really. I think we answered. We're happy to continue answering questions as you process. It's a lot of information. So as you go through the website and the application and, and start to process that information, we're just happy to answer any questions that you have. Liz, thanks. Dia Champ, same to you, uh, our director of middle schools. Dia, anything you'd like the folks at home to know before we close it out? Now, I just thank you all so much for participating in this Q&A session and really to look at that self family reflection tool to see if this is the right fit for you, because we want we want every child to be successful and we really want you all to reflect about this opportunity. So thank you again and, and send questions our way. We're happy to help you. Dia, thanks. And uh, Gary, Principal Gary Marshall, I will turn it to you for the last word. Anything you'd like the folks at home to know that we haven't already covered tonight? 
You're muted, oh, Gary. Oh man, we went <laughs> 70 minutes without a muted microphone. Sorry, it happens. <laughs> Thanks again for the opportunity, Andy, to um, to kind of close out and share some last thoughts. I really look forward to working with all of you next year, all of the families throughout Henrico County, K-12. This is a huge initiative. We are going to be one of the best programs in the nation. Um, so please join us on this incredible journey for next year. Go on and apply the applications live and ask questions. Please email and ask questions and we'll get back to you as soon as possible because we know that there are so many different situations that you have to consider in terms of your own schedule, your own family safety and everything like that. So please reach out and ask questions. Principal Gary Marshall, thank you very much. And to you, the folks at home, thank you for carving out some time for us on a Thursday evening. We so enjoyed spending this time with you. One more time, your web address is henricoschools.us slash Henrico Virtual Academy. You'll see the application on there right now. Tomorrow on Friday, we will officially notify everyone in our school system that that application is available and we will also include a recording of this session and in case anyone asks you at home we are working on providing translations of this session in languages other than english thank you so much for being with us for all of us here at henrico county public schools i'm andy jenks and we hope you have a great night take care